guitar enthusiasts, Jason Carey here. Today we're diving into Darius Rucker's rendition of Wagon Wheel. It's a modern classic with a fascinating origin. So stick around and let's unlock the secrets of this timeless tune together with some updated tips and tricks. Let's get started. I'd really like to start with the chord sequence, which is G and then D and then E minor and then C. And then the second time around is G5 and then D and then C and hang on to C for a couple of bars. And that pretty much repeats itself throughout the whole song. And you can see the chord shapes that I'm using here. And they're great because we're on capo two, of course, and we can use the G major scale to kind of fill in some gaps between the chords. Right, so we can do all these really cool things um, just to make, add some excitement in our playing, you know? Something as simple as just kind of hammering that second finger onto that C chord. Or you could actually, you know, hammer that fourth finger up to the C sus too. And then even open up the D string, you know, why not? Hey. You could also hammer your each, you know, I kind of think this is pretty cool. You know, hammer those notes onto the chords. That, you know, E minor is a great one to use that, the second and third fingers. That, you don't want to overuse it, but. But it can actually add some interest to the rhythmic part that we're playing. So another thing that we do is. create these little licks. So we know that we've got the G major scale right here in open, open position, right? Right, so we've got, if we use that G chord instead of the, the you know, the two middle fingers like the, sort of like the Nashville G, if we just use the, the G major triad, kind of blur that G major scale with, you know, sort of a combination blues scale. So we've got this. On the G chord too, we can add some color by adding the six, one, two, three, four, five, six, degree of the scale. We could also add the nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of the scale. You notice that I'm playing the G chord with my last three fingers, right? I mean, it's a, I'm calling it a G, it's a G shape. It's really an A chord, right? Because we're on fret number, capo number two. So instead of playing G down here, you know, E, F, G becomes an A, but for all, our talk today, we're just gonna call it G, okay? Just be aware that it's, we gotta transpose this, like for example, this was actually A, and then an, an E chord, right? <clears throat> and then this is an F sharp minor, and then this is a D. But for today, we're just gonna call everything G, D, E minor, and C, so we can recognize the chord shapes we're playing, cool? You can create all these really cool licks. Now, you could borrow the tr from the triad. Right, so. Or you could borrow from the minor pentatonic scale. 
like Doc Watson or, you know. So we've got that really cool stuff going for us right there in open position. So. So that's really fun stuff, okay? So don't overlook that. Here's another thing that we can do. We can start with playing the G chord up here and then we can play the, so instead of G there, we can use the D shape and then bring it up to that seventh fret. And then the next chord would be D, so we've gotta play this voicing of the D and then E minor, which would be, and then down to C, which would be basically that or this. So we could create a really cool triadic descending guitar line. Got where I'm going with that, and then G, and then D goes down to C. So we have this really cool cross picking or flat picking technique that we can our playing, right? So triads, truck, check those out. Very cool stuff. Oh, let's see. One, let's do one other thing. Um, what happens if we played only the low register? So we've got G chord here and we let's organize these in triads. There's E minor and then C, and then we've got the G. This could be a nice way to vary an arrangement, like let's say you're doing this song solo, and you wanted to take it somewhere else that just you can't go if we just play the same old chord shapes. Guitar, quick tip number four. Yeah, I'm Jason Carey, back with a crucial tip for your playing journey. Today, let's dive into the beauty of learning the melody in every song, just like we'll do with Darius Rucker's Wagon Wheel, right here, right now. Mastering the melody not only enhances your playing, but unlocks a deeper connection to the music. So remember, making melodies and studying the melodies is where the magic happens on your guitar journey. So the melody is this. So the melody is so easy on the on the guitar for this song. Then learning it in different places is the first thing to do. Right, so we've got the melody up here now, that B note that we started with. You could add those two notes together, right? And play a melodic octave line. Little 
messy, but you get the idea. So we're stretching it a little bit there, but we use some really cool guitar, guitaristic patterns that don't really belong, but maybe if we play them fast enough or if we're slick enough, we can make it work. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, happy picking. Whoa, whoa, whoa.